Well, we are about to start the second planking and um, using the pre-bending form that we did with the, the first set of planks, we are doing the same with the um, walnut and it works very much in the same way. Perhaps the biggest challenge I had was actually marking out the, um, the exact placement of the wheel. Uh, to do this, um, I used a, a caliper and took the measurements of the plan and then drew them on onto the board itself. So here we go, um, the final planking. Some of the measurements are given on the plan, but I took individual measurements under each of the windows back to the bottom of the wheel, and that allowed me to have a, a help with the curving of the wheel line. To keep the model upright, I used a 90 degree square clamped to the, the model, and that worked out really good. And then, of course, you need uh, I used a caliper. To, to work out on what all these measurements individuals were, mark them against the, the model, and was able to scribe the line fairly accurately on the model. Once this is done, you quickly um, add the two other extra boards, which makes up the thickness of the wheel. And now we are going to just a, a quick idea of, of uh, tapering the planks. And here we are using, um, using a liquid clamp, I call it, which is really CA. Um, I put the PVA glue down first and then pull the planks right up against the previous plank and then just put a dash of CA on it, really just to hold it really tight up against the previous plank. I don't like using CA totally because when you make an error you have to cut it out. Um, it's just totally unforgiving and it's just the nature of this job. You will make errors. So. Some people refer to this as liquid nails, whatever term you want to use. It really is a fantastic tool. And in the end, I, I'll glue the entire plant down. And um, whilst you're always leaving a little bit of your finger in there. And that's it, really. It's, um, it's really quite simple. You have to remember to take a cut a rabbit down between the first planking and the keel so that there's room for the walnut to make a proper transition. This is also the last time you're going to be able to use clamps. So from now on, as you go below the wheel, you're going to be using uh, CA as your liquid clamp. Or you can use the screw clamps um, because the walnut strips will be covering up any um, holes. I prefer really just to use CA as we go along. Um, I put PVA down first and then use the CA as you've seen um, to, to keep it in place. Um, you also need to, to try and keep the joins as close together uh, as possible so as to minimize the amount of fill that you would use 
later on. The less fill, the better. Um, you you really uh, don't want, if possible, to to have to use fill. But if you have no choice, it's fine. We are coming to the end. Um, you can see I've just sanded one side of the hull, and it really looks very nice. Um, I did use some Elma's walnut filler, um, which will get in little cracks between the boards. Um, there are many ways to do that. One is you, you take some of the sanding dust and mix it perhaps with, um, with epoxy, which, which should be fine. Uh, clay epoxy, which would also give you, uh, allow the, those cracks to be filled and then you sand them off. Um, that's a little harder than if you use something like the, the wood filler. And uh, when you take a look at the, um, the details of the of the fill, I think you'll you'll be happy with um, either this product or a similar product. I know I said not to use power tools, um, and it really is, uh, um, I was really trying to, uh, for those who are not used to them, to say you have to be very careful because a lot of work goes into this, and one one wrong move with uh, this sand, um, that would be a major error. However, I do use this Microlux sand up and it really is fantastic and takes a lot of the work out. You just have to be very, very careful um, on, on how you how you use it. He really is to use a very light sun paper, not a heavy one, and um, and use it to do the rough work, to take the major bumps out, and then when when you've got all of that out, then you need to go back to sandpaper and the hand. Uh, it's simply not worth the risk of, in this case, nearly three weeks of work. And so back to the um, the only real way to finish the halibut model. Lots of sandpaper, lots of time, and you literally keep going at it until it's absolutely perfect. Ah! And so here we are. Um, this is really the end of the of the final planking. Um, we'll still have a little bit to touch up and uh, we'll put a little more fill on a few odd spots and then we'll install this part you might remember seeing this early on that I had put it on and had to cut it off um, well now is the time to, to fit it back on and so we're now correcting the mistake we made um, and I probably have to take just a little bit out of here. The act of cutting it off, I lost probably one thirty second of an inch. Um, so we'd stick it down, and it's it's um, an acceptable mistake. Before we stick that in, though, we do need to clean up the stern. So using the Dremel with a ninety degree angle. And a drum sander. Uh, this makes sh make short work and uh, allows us to, to clean it up and line up everything perfectly. Um, I'm not sure exactly when you're supposed to do this, but I decided to do it now and I'm glad I did because there were lots of issues here. And uh, you need to use a, a round file and, um, and make sure you get this absolutely clean um, which also tells you you should be careful and not to cut off too much hair um, I 
just getting away with it. Um, I was also surprised to see that this was not very straight, so I'm going to sand this down as well. You may use the power sander, but be very careful. Um, I used it to take some of it down, but at the end of the day, you want to you really do it by hand. So that's pretty cool now. And the same for this. That's perfect. I um, haven't decided yet what finish I'm going to put on the bottom. But certainly in preparing the the hull, um, a very good friend of mine, Richard Hadi, introduced me to rub-on finishes. And I find them far superior to anything that you might brush on. This is um, the one I've decided to use simply because it's the one that's available here. It's a wipe-on polyurethane and it really has gone on beautifully. This is the first coat. Um, we'll have quite a bit more sanding to do. Um, take out all those fill areas so that we get just nice tight lines. And um, and we'll put at least three three of these coats on. Um, it's a matte finish and really makes the wood, the walnut come out. Uh, really looks beautiful.